Now 250,000, now I'm gonna get 275, five, I'm gonna get 275, three. Now 300,000, now three and a quarter, 325, five, I'm gonna get three and a quarter, I'm gonna get 325, now half. Now I'm gonna get 325. And welcome to the Mike McGavel Jones Show here in Dallas, Texas, at the corner of the LBJ Freeway and the Dallas North Tollway. Glad to have you all on, and uh, welcome to a live edition. Uh, good to be back. Uh, I think last week we did a best of series with uh, Burton Gilliam, and uh, we appreciate uh, you joining us. If you you know haven't been with us before, uh, it's always fun to um, have the shows and have great guests. And uh, today I'm going uh, solo. Um, I'm just returned from um, a busy couple of weeks on the road, and um, literally just got back uh, from Florida. And what I'm going to talk about today is um, uh, business brokerage. We're going to talk about selling businesses, selling business assets, mergers and acquisitions, something that our company uh, is very in tune with. Of course, our primary uh, largest piece of business is the uh, real estate side uh, of traditional and auction uh, with our United Real Estate Office here in Dallas and our uh, different units across the United States. We have uh, approximately over I guess over a hundred offices from Beverly Hills to Virginia to uh, Miami and uh, down here in Texas and uh, we're adding more offices all the time and then of course our United Country brand which is our rural recreational uh, land company one of the largest land if not the largest land company in America uh, with our 500 plus offices and uh, you know our combination of agents and brokers and auctioneers uh, runs around I guess our total body count right now is somewhere in the uh, six to seven thousand range, maybe as high as eight. As we continue to grow, uh, we have a, of course, our new CEO, uh, actually chief operating officer, uh, Rick Haas, who uh, offices here in Dallas with me uh, and our staff, and uh, he is helping grow the company. And you know, we just found, uh, finished a big Mother's Day weekend, and uh, I was fortunate enough to spend the. Um, afternoon yesterday with my mother and we had a good time uh, spent the pretty much all afternoon and into the early evening hours and so we'll do a quick shout out to uh, Yvonne Jones today and uh, thank you for spending that time we had we had a nice time yesterday weather was great uh, we didn't seem to have a lot of problems with the weather this weekend although some people did across the United States and we always keep our folks uh, you know close to our hearts down in uh, Mississippi and Alabama and uh, southeast Texas and Louisiana where all the rain hit uh, I know they had close to a foot of rain. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, the basketball finals with the NBA are going on. Uh, baseball's ramping up. So there's a where spring is in the air and spring is sprung. Uh, we uh, we are in super growth mode right now with our company and and I think with the economy like it is right now. Of course we are, are dealing with some uh, potential trade issues. Uh, with some of the tariffs that they're talking about. So that that may very well affect some of our business brokerages and uh, some of the manufacturing processes and our, our retail prices. Um, I was watching some news this morning and they were saying that, uh, you know, we were, you know, just on washers and dryers alone, uh, somewhere between 75 and $100 increase. And, uh, and evidently the uh, manufacturers uh, don't even have a tariff on those, but they raise the price to just kind of get in line and have a chance to, to grab a few extra dollars. They certainly have the right to do that. Uh, as far as uh, our position or my position on um, the tariff situation, we've been in such an imbalance with China for so long now, uh, it's hard for one president to try to fix uh, the tariff situation in four years or eight years or whatever. Um, you know. The uh, position of Walmart is that uh, this is going to hurt the, the American public and the families and uh, the average family will, it'll cost them a th roughly a thousand dollars. And uh, but the problem is you, at some point we have to dig down and, and do the right thing. And that is to get the tariffs in a position where it's more fair because we have basically given away uh, our manufacturing base over the last 35 years and I was a big part of doing that by dismantling plants and selling companies and moving them uh, to Mexico and China and so 
and not me personally wanting to do it, but uh, as a result of companies and uh, funds and financial institutions uh, making changes because of things like NAFTA, uh, we certainly were in the front of it. So we spent about 15 to 20 years uh, dismantling our uh, manufacturing base here in the United States. So, you know, I'm very passionate about getting things right. And, uh, you know, we had to, uh, as, a, as a country, we had to dig deep during World War One and Two. During World War Two, uh, you know, uh, and World War One, there was a lot of rationing and and uh, commodities were hard to come by, and you know, even tires and things like that uh, had to go towards the war effort. You know, the country really had to dig down deep to get through those wars, and uh, they sacrificed a lot in order for us to have this country. And to me, uh, if it takes a thousand dollars a family to uh, correct this uh, tariff uh, mistake that we've had for the last 20, 30 years, then I think that's what we have to do. And uh, that's not being uh, cold-hearted towards a family that makes 15 or 20 or $30,000 a year. It's just a reality that uh, if you give away your, e your economic base to a, a country like China, China is going to own uh, the position all over the world as the number one country uh, for uh, retail, uh, for manufacturing and for commodities that we need. So we have to adjust it. It's not going to be pleasant. Um, I guess this president is, you know, he's willing to do what he thinks he needs to do in order to make that happen. Uh, I just wish that uh, more congressmen uh, and senators and elected officials in all the states would step up and uh, participate in accepting the fact that this is what we have to do in order to get our bases right. And uh, evidently Trump is willing to do that. Now, will that put us in a recession? I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I would imagine that being uh, he is a, a horse trader of, of some capacity, he's going to be prepared to uh, adapt quickly. They're talking 90 days. I don't think it'll take 90 days. They'll, they'll move quicker. Um, I will tell you that uh, two weeks ago, when I was in Washington, D.C., uh, conducting the Ducks Unlimited uh, congressional auction, uh, they call it uh, the um, they call it the Capitol Dinner, and uh, so I was with a lot of the ag people, a lot of them. I was actually sitting with uh, Vice President Pence's brother Greg, and his wife Denise, and uh, and three or four very powerful agricultural-based individuals. One uh, in particular uh, had, has about a half a billion dollars he wants to invest right now uh, in land and pension funds and farm-related ag businesses. And we had a lot of conversations about this. And uh, I think we're in a pretty good position right now, uh, even though the markets are adjusting. We're gonna get it figured out. And uh, so anyway, just a little uh, shout out to, uh, to the folks out there and in the Midwest and around the country that do agricultural products and they grow our commodities and you know we know that we can have type type you know tighten up our belt a little bit uh, but our farmers are our backbone and uh, we have to get trade right and so uh, it may be painful for a while but in the long run it should benefit the entire country so we just have to suck it up and take it uh, I do want to talk about uh, business brokerage that's what I was doing um, in Florida this past week uh, kind of getting brought up to speed on what's going on. I want to talk about how to sell a business because that's what we do. We also have some, some strategic relationships with business brokers here in Dallas, Fort Worth, and also uh, internationally and uh, across the United States. So anytime that we uh, get approached about uh, selling a business, uh, we work with other companies that are uh, extremely good at it. And uh, then we stand by prepared to handle the real estate or liquidate the assets, depending on uh, what the uh, situation is. So, for example, uh, one of the some of the things uh, you look at when you're selling a business, you know, uh, a rough outline. If you're getting ready to sell a business, uh, is there's going to be an excuse, exclusive listing agreement, which is just like selling real estate. Right. So uh, any business broker. Uh, or company that sells um, real property or business uh, businesses that are operating are going to expect to uh, have you sign an exclusive listing agreement to sell that. Uh, also, there's going to be documentation. There'll be 
a lot of paperwork to fill out. There'll be detailed information uh, that has to be done. There has to be a contract. There has to be a beginning. There has to be an end. So it's a standardized um, uh, contract uh, um, that will, you know, secure the listing and, and how that's going to work. The other, the next thing uh, that's going to happen is there'll be a uh, valuation process. So if you're going to sell your business, you're definitely going to uh, need to get a valuation done. Valuations uh, are not free. They typically cost. I do know some, uh, some companies that will uh, maybe do some type of uh, uh, consulting where there's not a fee. Uh, if they're going to get a, uh, a listing on the, an exclusive listing on the sale of that particular uh, company. Uh, however, I've also heard the argument from others that say it's going to cost you X number of dollars up to, you know, two or $3,000 to give you a valuation on your business because quite frankly, you might, uh, an individual might get a valuation that they don't like and they decide, you know what, I, I don't think I'm going to sell right now. I don't think the timing is right. Uh, I'm going to wait, and uh, there's no guarantee that that business is going to make the circle back around to that uh, person who did the valuation. So uh, most of the time they will charge for that, and uh, I know in some cases I have heard that uh, the valuation is done, um, uh, but then when the person gets the listing, maybe they uh, will uh, perhaps rebate the fee in some form or another. I don't know. You know, every, Everybody runs their business differently. Uh, so there is a valuation and pricing. Um, there is a completion of professional marketing package, much like an auction, uh, which I do a lot of, or a traditional listing, which we're doing more and more of. Um, we're going to put together a marketing plan. Uh, we, we very, we're very comprehensive, uh, of course, with us, uh, with United Real Estate and United Country Real Estate and U uh, United SCS, Strategic Client Services, where I'm the broker of record. Uh, I work with uh, Amanda Seiler uh, Klein there in Kansas City and our team up there of uh, uh, 15, 20 folks. And I probably, if you figured everybody that touches that particular piece of marketing uh, for a project, it's probably closer to 30 or 40. But I'll work with the EMS team in, in KC and uh, they will do a very comprehensive marketing plan, which we will uh, have in a line uh, by line uh, spreadsheet and uh, we'll present that to the seller. Now, some uh, business brokers charge for advertising, some do not. And uh, I actually taught a class uh, the last two or three days uh, about what we do, and uh, that was a conversation. And I, I asked for a show of hands how many business brokers ask for advertising, and uh, much like real estate professionals, uh, brokers and agents, uh, probably only five or 10% actually ask for upfront money to market and advertise that business. I, on the other, other hand, and my compatriots, uh, we are going to charge for that advertising because our philosophy is you want the seller to uh, have skin in the game and you want them to be invested in the process. And just listing with somebody, uh, you, wanna, you wanna list it or you wanna sell it? And a lot of people, just they, 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 there, is no, um, there is no sense of urgency whatsoever. It's like, yeah, if you can sell it, I'll, you know, yeah, if you can sell it, I'll let you. Well, that's not good enough. If we're going to invest our time, our money, uh, you know, all we have is, is our time and time is very expensive. So we're going to charge, uh, but it's going to be fair and it's going to be to promote the, uh, the, the sale of the business. I actually looked at a business when I was in Orlando uh, over the weekend and it's a, a legacy business. Uh, I expect that we will sign it up probably sometime later this week. Uh, they've been in business probably 20, 25 years. Uh, they bought it from an existing uh, individual that had it. Uh, it had been there a long time. Well, you know, Orlando, much like Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, much like California in some places and uh, at various locations throughout the Midwest, uh, the market's good and uh, area is growing. There's a lot of growth in Orlando to the suburbs, uh, same as here in Dallas, Fort Worth, in Houston, Austin, uh, San Antonio, everything's growing. And so uh, they have operated this company uh, very well for the last 20 years and, or 12 years, sorry, 12 years. And uh, they have had uh, growth every month since they've owned the business. Now that sounds crazy, but uh, in looking at their financials and looking at their tax records over the weekend, 
uh, it's exactly what they've done. They've kept very good records. They're very honest. They're a, a good Christian family. They treat people very well. They're very community minded. And uh, so they're kind of sitting in a position where uh, age is, is a, a factor and retirement is a factor. And so uh, they're looking forward to selling that business and then spending more time doing what they want to do. And, and uh, I, I keep hearing more and more people wanting to uh, sell their businesses, buy an RV or a bus and uh, travel the country, see America. So many of us uh, get so excited about going to a foreign country, uh, whether it's Costa Rica or South America or uh, Asia and uh, Europe. Uh, so many people have never even seen the Grand Canyon. They've never, uh, never seen any of the beautiful things that we have here in this country. And they're shocked when they finally do go. They go, I had no idea how beautiful America was. So, uh, but a lot of people are recognizing it with their small businesses and they want to travel and spend their remaining years uh, either with their spouse or their significant other uh, or just by themselves to see uh, what they haven't seen so far. And I think people are starting to realize that life is short. You know, I've said that a gazillion times. So anyway, uh, we wrap up the marketing package um, and then we start working on locating the buyers. And uh, a lot of the buyers may be uh, current business owners that have similar businesses. Uh, sometimes it will be someone that uh, maybe they've been in an industry and they're just burned out and they want to do something different. So they're looking for something uh, that is challenging. Uh, some of the businesses, of course, are a little more challenging and difficult, whether it's a, a manufacturing facility, uh, which requires a lot of engineering uh, and technical expertise with the machinery. Uh, you can't just pop into that. Now, you can pop in as the owner, but then I have found that uh, usually a, an, an owner who is not actively involved in the business uh, has a harder time than someone who actually understands the business and understands the machines and has grown up in that business to some degree, or at least had some experience. But you know, uh, other businesses that you can own, you know, you can go out and buy a sign company. Uh, that's all very trainable. Uh, restaurants, bars, uh, you know, one, one lady that I talked to over the weekend, you know, her expertise is restaurants. That's all she does. And with United uh, Strategic Client Services and the United Brands, we have something called specialty property groups. And specialty property groups uh, targets uh, directly to uh, unique uh, offerings in real estate and in business. So we have a hospitality group uh, that, uh, that specializes in hotels and motels and, and uh, bed and breakfast, things of that nature. Uh, these are very um, accessible, it's very available. There's a lot of these boutique type of businesses out there available. Uh, people do enjoy running them, but at some point, you know, everybody likes to do something different. Um, the days of someone opening a bed and breakfast and running it for 30 years is very rare now. You don't see that. You'll see somebody run that business for 10 or 15 years and, uh, and then make a switch, do something different. You know, back in the old days, we had bowling alleys. Uh, Bowling alleys today are more, more like entertainment complexes. You know, 20, 30 years ago, I used to sell a lot of bowling alleys. Uh, we used to sell a lot of putt-putt golf courses. Uh, we used to sell a lot of pool halls, billiard halls. Uh, we used to sell, uh, back in the day, um, pretty much a variety of different business. Antique shops were big 30, 40 years ago. Most of these businesses either don't exist in small town America uh, or they have been uh, pretty much overshadowed by major uh, companies, uh, chains. You know, Dave & Buster's, I used to do all the liquidation for assets for Dave & Buster's back in the 80s, uh, late 80s and early 90s when they were uh, growing their businesses. This goes back to when uh, you actually put money in the machines. Uh, it wasn't operated off of tickets. Um, they started right off of, uh, uh, right of I-35 uh, here in Dallas. A lot of people don't realize where Dave & Buster's started. Uh, it was right off of corporate, um, right off of I-35 and Walnut Hill. And I used to go to their corporate offices and there really was a, a, uh, a, uh, a couple of guys, you know, named Dave and Buster. Uh, uh, Dave and uh, Buster both went to SMU. They were great guys. And, but they, they had a vision. They enjoyed carnivals and they enjoyed fairs and they enjoyed games and they liked bowling and they liked entertaining and they liked to drink and they liked to have a good time. And so they created a business from it. And uh, of course it was acquired over time by a, 
uh, a larger group and that's made it an international name all over the world. But Dave and Buster's is a perfect example of how two guys that just found something they liked. Uh, I think Top Golf is another example of that. Somebody liked to play golf, and uh, not everybody wants to go get out on a golf course, uh, but people do like to eat and drink, and they like to be entertained. And uh, I think Top Golf is another example of just uh, a brilliant idea coming to reality. And it's one of the fastest growing companies uh, right now in the United States, if not abroad. So anyway, uh, we're going to target buyers. It's going to be very strategic. Uh, you know, we're going to. You also have to look at the area that you're in. Where, where you, where do you want to, where do you want to be located? So, uh, who, would, for example, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of folks that are in the business of recreational um, businesses, uh, tubing down a river, uh, marinas. We sell a lot of marinas and things of that nature, uh, like the Red River Marina over in Bossier City from a couple of years ago. Uh, a lot of lake property, mountain property, ski resorts, uh, different types of interesting, unique businesses um, that have their own little niche. And uh, so I'm leaving. I am leaving here today. I'm going to be going to uh, Colorado this evening. Uh, I will be in Durango uh, in the morning. I have a meeting with some folks um, regarding their business. We already have the we already have the uh, the listing on it. Uh, it is a uh, a gravel mining operation. Uh, they were a big provider of uh, the uh, uh, different types of materials to build uh, landing strips and runways and, and also state highways. Uh, there are certain types of uh, gravel and, and, uh, and base that you need and they were a large supplier for that. So we have that property for sale right now. And uh, we're going to go out and visit with our sellers and, and uh, see how they feel and what they want to do and what direction they want to go. They've been there a long, long time, 30, 40 years uh, in the same location. And so uh, that's going to be my morning. In the afternoon, I'm going to go look at 2,300 acres uh, near uh, Durango. Uh, it's a legacy family ranch. Uh, the folks are, are all stockholders or the, the, patri uh, the patriarchs and the matriarchs are all stockholders and they've all decided it's time to sell. And then uh, I'll hook up with Gary Hubble, and uh, who is our business development uh, guy out in Colorado and Utah and, and up towards Wyoming. And, and then we're going to go look at another ranch with the, our good friends, uh, the Bowmans. And we're going to look at a property out there on Wednesday. And uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And, uh, you know, when you think about ranches and uh, farming operations, guys, those are businesses, any way you want to look at it. Now, some of them are leisure, some of them are for fun, uh, but we, we, you know, we have a, a great hunting property right now up in Minnesota um, with our friends with Sunbelt, and uh, that property is for sale right now. So if you, you want to get on uh, our website, check it out, www.united-scs, that's Strategic Client Services. Um, united-scs.com check out all the things that we have going on not everything is up right now we have some you know, things getting ready to be posted um, and moving along one of the things that a, a business broker is going to do for you um, whether you're buying or selling is they're going to screen the potential buyers you know it's uh, I had a gentleman call the other day and says hey I want to come out and look at your property in in uh, Maryland well it's a 22 million dollar property and we had an agent call, one of our agents call and say, hey, I want to look at it. You know, the, the thing about it is just because somebody calls up and says, hey, I want to go look at that $22 million property, that doesn't mean you jump and go show it to the person because we want to make sure this person even has the means uh, to purchase a $22 million property or that he, even if he's an intermediary or a third party, at least uh, we, we need to know that his potential buyer um, has the means to, to purchase that property. And that's something that a business broker or an, an auctioneer or a realtor or someone uh, in the sales business of hard assets and, and land uh, or manufacturing equipment, you just have to know who you're dealing with. And, and your sellers always appreciate that because uh, your sellers do not want just random people uh, on their properties or in their manufacturing facilities or, or on their land. So you just have to keep that in mind. Uh, just because somebody wants to do something doesn't mean that they have the qualifications to do it. So we're definitely gonna go through the process. And then uh, we'll meet with the qualified buyers and we will show the properties. Um, there's gonna be a, a lot of things involved. 
Uh, once we find a, a possible buyer for a property, uh, then there needs to be a letter of intent. We want to make sure uh, uh, that it, the legal process is done and there's going to be a letter of intent. And then uh, a purchase agreement. Uh, it's always important to have a purchase agreement. Uh, if uh, you present the uh, purchase agreement to the seller and they uh, are willing to accept it, uh, there'll be an acceptance of the purchase agreement. And then also um, there may be financing involved. And uh, that's something that I spent a lot of time on last week. Uh, was getting into the intricacies of finance. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can finance a business. And so uh, you want to help the uh, buyer uh, if they need financing, whether they're going to go through uh, maybe a bank uh, that, that does SBA loans. I used to do a lot of SBA work previously. And uh, there has been some laws and rule changes in regard to SBA loans. Uh, I won't get specific uh, about them today, but you know we may do an SBA um, podcast one of these days and do a show specific to getting business loans. But anyway, in this particular case, uh, we want to be able to work with the buyer uh, in regard to financing. Financing uh, most, uh, most businesses today, unless it's a small business, say under a half a million dollars, but most businesses over a half a million dollars, there's going to be some form of financing involved. And there may be lease assignments. So, you know, you may have an agreement on the, the uh, the, uh, well, in fact, just to give you an example, over the weekend when I looked at that business, you know, there was a discussion of, uh, well, we were thinking about keeping the real estate and just leasing it. And then on one of the other partners in the deal said, I'd really rather sell the whole thing. I'd like to sell the business, the real estate, everything that goes with it. And so you have a, a little difference of opinion on uh, exactly what the best route to go is. So, you know, these are things that matter uh, because um, if the seller decides to keep the real estate, then of course, you know, it's gonna be mailbox money for them. Um, but then along with that comes some uh, maintenance issues, uh, insurance, taxes, and all those things. And how does that, how is that going to play out? And so we just have to make sure that uh, they are, you know, they understand the ramifications. And in some cases, uh, it will re require a lot of uh, discussions with their accountant, uh, maybe their banker, and maybe they have some debt on their business. Uh, maybe they have debt on the, the land. So. Uh, we love, of course, a turnkey operation where they're, they're buying everything and assuming everything, but in some cases, there are lease agreements involved. And of course, there's always uh, a lot of details related to closing, uh, a lot of intricacies that are involved in that. Um, anytime you have uh, um, large assets, especially manufacturing facilities, when you get into manufacturing facilities, there are a lot of issues. Um, lenders are looking at everything. Uh, it may be uh, what the cost is going to be to operate the place, uh, how much cash reserves do they have. Uh, they also are going to be interested in uh, environmental issues on the land. Uh, how was the land used previously? Uh, I can tell you that there's some properties in Connecticut, uh, at, outside of New York City uh, and New Jersey, where it's extremely hard for them to sell the properties. Uh, and, it, and a lot of your lenders won't make the loan because of the, uh, the uh, hazardous issues um, because of wastewater and, and dumping situations that took place before. Um, I'll give an example. When you start talking about um, Kodak, Kodak plants, uh, of course, used to deal with a lot of uh, hazardous waste. And uh, some of those properties are, are almost unsellable. We've ran, we have uh, run into the same situations in Pennsylvania with some uh, commercial properties that we've come across. So they, people just need to be aware, just because you wanna buy something um, doesn't necessarily mean that the lending institutions are going to agree with it. Uh, they may say, no, we, you know, the, the uh, appraisal came back, but you know, here's the, uh, they also did an evaluation of the property and, and this is, this is what, what happened and this is how it came out and we just can't buy into that. Um, there's not a lot of massive changes. Uh, the, the, the valuable uh, management or strategy changes that's going to take place with a business uh, could be a part of the decision making process too. So for example, you know, if I buy a company, I want to make sure that people stay in place. Uh, if, if it's a successful company, uh, it is, uh, I just met with another gentleman in Kansas City uh, a week and a half ago about his business. and. Uh, 
you know, he when he, when I talked to him about going to talk about the business, he said, "I really uh, want to keep this confidential." And I think confidentiality, you know, confidentiality is extremely huge in this particular segment of business. Um, he said, "You know, I don't want my staff, I don't want uh, the girls in the office, I don't want." The lady that uh, that works at the front door, I just don't want them to know uh, that I'm thinking about selling the business. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll be very nondescript. Uh, there won't be any logos on my shirt. I won't be passing out any business cards. And uh, I'll use my legal name, not my given name. So uh, it makes a difference. You know, uh, that comfort level for that seller, the one that's selling their business, they need to know that confidentiality is at the forefront. I will tell you that uh, one of the reasons that you hire a professional is to make sure that all of these things are as buttoned up as possible. When you're trying to sell your business as an individual, uh, and, and this could be uh, whether you're selling the assets or you're actually selling an ongoing business, most of your most of your sellers want confidentiality. Well, when you're trying to sell it yourself, it's impossible to maintain confidentiality. Okay, I'm just telling you, it's, uh, the odds of that happening are very slim, unless you're able to find that first buyer and they buy the pro they buy the asset. Confidentiality is one of the, the uh, hardest things to maintain, hardest things to uh, keep on, uh, keep people uh, keep their mouth shut. They just can't do it. It's not in human nature. Human nature is not to hold information. Uh, people love to talk. People love to gossip. And uh, so if you if you plan on selling your business, you better work with a professional who understands uh, uh, agreements uh, related to uh, non-disclosure. And, and I won't go into to that heavy heavy duty, but I'll just say that uh, I find that to be a, an extremely important thing because once the the rumor mill gets around, it's everything from oh I heard they're broke, oh yeah their business has been off ever since so and so went to work for them. The rumor mill just kills a good business, and so I uh, certainly appreciate the confidentiality factor. And so if you ever call me uh, to sell your business uh, or uh, one of our strategic partners that we work with, uh, we can assure you that the confidentiality is what we're really good at. And uh, we want to main that maintain that confidentiality until the sale is completed. It's just like when you sign something up, um, you know, if I land an auction and we're going to have an auction and what I'm not going to do is run around brag about, hey, I got this contract, or hey, I just looked at I just looked at this deal. I'm so excited uh, because until you have a signed contract or until you have a sale completed, you really don't have anything to talk about. And I and a lot of our friends in the business would tell you that it kind of jinxes the deal. Uh, when you start talking about a deal, the deal just tends to almost always fall through, and you never get to complete the deal. You got to brag about it for a minute. But at the end of the day, you didn't make any money and there was nothing to uh, brag about. So we just tend to lean on the side of not talking about things that don't need to be talked about and, uh, and leave it at that. Uh, in, in regard to uh, buying an existing business, i just kind of give you a few things to think about. Uh, what are the advantages of buying an existing business? Uh, first off, ease of in, uh, investigation. You know, you can learn a lot about a business very quickly that's already existing. You know, when you're trying to start something from scratch, there's learning curves in everything. Now, there's a lot more information today available on the internet, uh, search engines. You can find out a lot of information. I'm not going to tell you you can find out everything, but you can find out a lot. But I think also that when you can purchase a business that is existing, uh, the learning curves already happened. They've already been through. If they have a history of success, then, then that's already uh, been demonstrated by their successful business. The infrastructure is in place, so you don't have to recreate an infrastructure. You already have the building. You already have the assets. You already have the staff. You already have the training. Training's been done. You already have cash flow. Uh, when you walk into an existing business that has um, up-to-date P&Ls and, and, and income statements and all the, the other financial information that you need, tax returns, that helps a great deal. You're not going in blind, and you also have the benefit of the professional that's working with you because they know the right questions to ask, and uh, they have the right to, the right to ask the questions. Um, the purchase price uh, differences, uh, of course, are a part of that. Flexibility in negotiating. Uh, anytime that you have a business broker or um, 
someone who's a professional doing this, um, there is that flexibility. You, they, they know how to negotiate the sale. Financial history is already there. It's laid out there for you. Uh, they have a proven product or service. The platform to build upon has already been created. You're not, you're not starting from scratch. You're starting, or you've already made it to third base. Maybe you're just ready to hit a home run and build the business and grow the business and take it to the next level. Uh, that was one of the comments that was made in Orlando this weekend is the folks said, you know, we have a great business. It, it has been growing um, every month since we've had it. Um, however, we have kind of maxed out our capabilities as far as our energy level and what we can do with it. And we know it's set up for the next uh, owner to take it to the next level. You hear that a lot. Um, visual, it's already in place. It's visually, it already has its place in the business world and people already recognize they're doing business there. So it's not like you're having to get a location nobody's ever been to, uh, there's no traffic set. Uh, anytime you buy a business that's, that has a great traffic count uh, in a growing location or growing area or growing demographic or a grow, growing region, uh, something near an airport, um, you're going to have a better chance of success if you just start from scratch somewhere and you don't really have the history. You don't have, you also don't have the ability to, to pay all the professionals that it would take to do the research, uh, whether it's traffic count, all these things, you would spend a tremendous amount of time trying to do research to figure out if it was a good buy or not. Um, also, it has an existing customer base. You know, when I was there the other day in Orlando, the place was uh, full. It was full. The whole time I was there, uh, it, uh, it never slowed up. And, uh, and I spent about uh, two or three hours learning about that business. I learned who their clients were, um, if they have special events, how they market, do they market, where do they spend money, uh, who are they appealing to, who are they trying to get business from. So I found it very, I always enjoy spending time with business people because you learn a lot and you can learn a lot for your own business by learning from other people. And then the other thing is the employees. If they have great employees, you don't want to see them leave and uh, maybe you incentivize them to stay. You know, maybe you give them a, a raise when you come to the door and say, look, this isn't going to happen every month, but I want you to stay. Uh, you're a valuable, uh, uh, you're a valuable person to this business and you're a big part of making it successful. And we want you to know you don't have to worry about your job. And that goes a long way uh, with people with, that have been with a company for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. So um, that's important. So, you know, uh, there's confidentiality involved. Uh, you know, but there's a, a buyer profile, a seller profile. Uh, we definitely want to know everything we can about these people. And, and, you know, also when people are buying a business or selling a business, uh, I can tell you that from an SBA perspective, um, they're going to want to know, you know, like if you're getting ready to take out an SBA loan or you're going to try to get an SBA loan, they're looking at everything today. They, and they, move, they can move quick uh, if you give them all the information. So if you want to buy a business, uh, you just need to make sure you have all your financial records together. They're going to look at your criminal history, uh, all, all, whatever the story is about the majority of the, the, the people that are going to be owning it, the stockholders or whatever, or the sole proprietor, um, they're going to be looking at that and they're going to care about your, uh, your history as a person. They're, uh, you know, whether, whether that sounds right or not, uh, it's a fact. Uh, they're, uh, you know, they're not going to base it on hearsay. They're going to base it on what, you know, what it says. So if you have a, if you have a, um, a bad background, it's probably going to catch up with you to some, some form uh, or another. The other thing is, uh, someone buying a business is going to have to have the financial means to buy it. You're going to have to have some cash in the bank. You're going to have to be able to operate for a period of time. Uh, they're, they are going, the banks that make these kind of loans are going to want to make sure that you can survive for a period of time, uh, not making any money. So if you buy that business and you walk in and let's say that nobody likes you and it's a consumer, uh, retail type business. And all of a sudden people keep you know, they quit walking in the door. Uh, they want to know that you've got some survival time. The other thing is the assets that are involved. Um, most bankers uh, are going to require that, uh, you know, that, that there are some actual hard assets. A service business where there are no assets is a very hard business to finance. Um, they don't like to make those kinds of loans and they don't want to do it where you're only putting five or 10% down. They want to know that you're putting a reasonable amount of money in your in, down to buy that, to buy that business. Uh, or those assets. So that's just a couple of keys. And, uh, you know, 
anytime that you're, um, it's a people business. At the end of the day, um, you know, we, we, uh, we love to do business with lots of people. Uh, we will probably do somewhere, I'm not sure what our total count is, but you know, even uh, 13, 14 years ago, we were doing uh, 16 to 20,000 transactions a year. And now that we have United Real Estate, uh, you're, you're going into the hundreds of thousands of transactions a year. Now, SES, United Strategic Client Services, united-ses.com, uh, that we operate here in Dallas, that's my team. Uh, we won't do that many, uh, we won't do that many deals, uh, no, but nor do we want to. Most of the deals that we're gonna do in our office are going to be in the two million uh, to 50 million or up uh, pros, you know, price range. And so, uh, you know, kind of a sweet spot for us is in that $5 million range. That doesn't mean we won't do a million dollar deal. So there's been some confusion out there as to what size deals we'll, we will do. You know, hey, uh, if, if it's one of the lenders that we work with, uh, we may be doing a half a million dollar deal or a $300,000 deal, but it's going to be a quicker transaction. We won't be tying up a, t a ton of time on it. Um, but you know, I'm getting ready to go on the road and the average price range of the deals that, that we're doing right now are gonna be two to $10 million. And uh, you know, I just looked at a $50 million winery the other day. And uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's not trying to be arrogant. It's just, that's what we're looking at. And so I just want people to know that we're here to do business. Uh, we work a lot with our United uh, Real Estate Offices and our United Country Real Estate Offices to help them win deals and then also some of our strategic partners. And uh, so whether we're working with Ducks Unlimited or Sunbelt Business Brokers or Transamerica or any of the other major uh, groups that we work with, uh, or, uh, you know, Realtree. That's another example of a group we work with. And a lot of our properties and assets uh, are connected to the branding of these projects. So uh, we, uh, we like doing deals. So if you have a deal and you would like to work with me on a project, or you'd like to work with my team here in Dallas, uh, or with Dan Duffy and uh, the rest of our group, uh, then certainly keep us in mind. You can give me a call at 214-906. 5265 214-906-5265. Uh, I'm Mike Jones. I'm the president of the company, United Strategic Client Services, www.united-scs.com. We'd love to work with you in helping you sell your assets, whether they're in the United States, Panama, Costa Rica, Mexico, uh, could be in Australia uh, or in Canada. We'd be love to, uh, love to talk to you. We also have a new relationship in China right now uh, that is going to be uh, quite something to announce when we uh, we make the announcement, but I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. We have a direct link to the CEOs of China, and we're looking forward to uh, to having those folks to interact with, uh, along with the other major CEOs here in the United States. So I think, I think Matt, that's going to be about it for today. And uh, we want to thank you all for joining um, the Mike McGavel Jones Show here in Dallas, Texas. And on behalf of Matt and everybody that's putting this show together, we look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless from Dallas. We bid you adieu.